Ladies and gentlemen, the NBA trade deadline day is upon us, and it's already over actually, so thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. So, no, I'm just playing, but for real, let's break down what the Celtics did at the trade deadline today. I think a lot of casual fans are kind of overreacting a little bit, and there's a little bit more behind the scenes as to what happened today than what meets the eye on the surface. So stick around. I'm going to break it down for you guys. Riders on the First of all, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, glad that you made it. Talk about NBA trade rumors and news on the channel, so if you're new and you want to find your way back, hit the subscribe button down below and make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. So first of all, obviously the big news today is that the Celtics pick up Evan Fournier for two second round picks, so not a lot given up to get Evan Fournier. And I think what a lot of people are overlooking, I've seen so much immediate reaction where people are like, oh my god, you picked up a guard who's on an expiring contract. First of all, Evan Fournier is 6'7". I mean, we would have no problem playing him at the three spot if we want to, and he would fit into the starting lineup, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And aside from that, we also have his bird rights. So when he's a free agent this offseason, the Celtics can match any offer that other teams are willing to give him if they want to keep him. And that's regardless of the salary cap. So it's not like he's guaranteed to walk this offseason. I know in my past video when I talked about the potential Aaron Gordon trade, I was kind of mentioning him like that. But that was with the thought that we were getting Aaron Gordon, too, because obviously his salary is going to be a decent number. So my thought was that we wouldn't have the money to make it work but if you know since we just got evan fournier it is certainly an option that the celtics keep him and he sticks around as i mentioned too briefly in the last video evan fournier is having a great season he's averaging 19 points a game although keep in mind that is on the orlando magic who are not a great team they have also been decimated by injuries over there so don't expect that he's going to come over here and average 20 points a game i have seen some people thinking that way but in my mind, I'm probably thinking he's going to average like 13 points a game, probably splitting opportunity with Marcus Smart. I think that they kind of fall into that fourth man uh, role on the offense here. And most importantly here, he's going to be taking away minutes from Grant Williams, Semi Ojale, Juante Green's gone, Jeff Teague is gone. So we're going to see a lot less minutes from those guys who should be at the back end of the rotation on a better NBA team. Evan Fournier is going to kind of take some of those minutes away. You'd assume he's going to be averaging, you know, 30 minutes at least a game. So that's definitely positive for the rotation. And honestly, I think that fact alone makes this team marginally better. I'm not saying that, you know, we're the Brooklyn Nets now, but I think it, it's definitely an improvement to the rotation. You kind of solidify that wing depth, which is what we needed, you know, and that's, I think the consensus is that that's what the team needed to trade for. I know that there are a lot of casual fans that no matter what, they're going to clamor that we get another big man. We need to solidify rebounding and paint presence, but I don't think that was necessarily the biggest need here. But no matter what, you're always going to see fans saying that. I'm trying to block out that noise a little bit. I think that in a way here, Evan Fournier is going to be a very poor man's Gordon Hayward because he kind of fits into that spot on the roster. We could definitely throw him into the starting role as he develops chemistry with this team. Probably not right away, but you know, as the season goes on, maybe by playoffs, we can fit him into that starting role and move Marcus Smart into that six man kind of role that I think he would be very good in because he's got the energy to do it, certainly. So I think that in a way, this is definitely like a test of this current team, because now you're getting that Gordon Hayward spot somewhat filled in. And now you're just going to see, you know, what can this team perform to what the expectations were at the offseason now that you've filled up that void. And, you know, even if they don't, you're not going over the luxury tax to do it. I'm going to break that down in a second here. Just real quick before I move forward, if you guys are getting value out of today's video, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button down below. Because the Celtics were able to do some financial maneuvering before the trade deadline ended. And that's what we're going to get into right now. Um, the second big move that people really freaked out about. Because I think at first there was some negative reaction to Evan Fournier. Because fans were like, what the heck? We wanted Aaron Gordon. We wanted Vucevic. So why? now we just get Evan Fournier. That's it. And then the Celtics ended up trading Daniel Tice for Mo Wagner. Uh, and people were just 
at irate at that point because mm. Mo Wagner is worse than Daniel Tice. And why did you make that move in the first place? Well, the reason is because the team was trying to stay under the luxury tax and they ended up doing that. So now you were able to bring in Evan Fournier with little to no risk because you only gave up two second round picks to get him and you were able to stay under the luxury tax for this season because let's face it, nothing this season is going to be a guarantee. Even if we got Vucevic or Aaron Gordon, we don't know if we're going to be able to beat the Nets come playoffs, just being honest. So this way you're able to marginally improve improve the team and you're not paying the luxury tax to do it. We are going to see Jeff Teague and Javante Green go. They're no longer members of the team. Uh, Jeff Teague's going to the Magic. It looks like they're going to buy him out, so he's not even going to be playing for the Magic. And then Javante Green was a part of the Tice deal, so he's going to the Bulls. And there's two underrated things about this trade that I wanted to bring up for you guys because I think that they're positives that most fans aren't talking about if you go to the general reaction on Twitter. So the first one, is that now you're going to be opening up opportunity for Robert Williams and Peyton Pritchard, which is something that fans have been wanting all season long. We're probably going to see Robert Williams in the starting role now that Daniel Tice is gone. So we're going to be splitting minutes between him and Tristan Thompson. And then we've got a couple of bigs behind them that can take some minutes just so that the load isn't strictly on time lord and thompson i think that's really good especially in the case of robert williams because he has been the best center on this team for a little while now so now you really get a chance to see him shine and hopefully get that starting role and and take that for the rest of the season into playoffs i think that robert williams will make a big impact certainly and something that i've barely seen brought up at all this is per keith smith that the celtics can create a new traded player exception of five million dollars because Mo Wagner is going into the Vincent Poirier traded player exception and the Celtics still have the Ennis Cantor traded player exceptions. So now we have two $5 million traded player exceptions along with the rest of the Gordon Hayward traded player exception, which there's $11 million left. So there's still plenty of flexibility going into the upcoming offseason for the Celtics to make some moves. If it doesn't work out with Evan Fournier, you know, we could do another sign and trade with him. Um, there's just now there's plenty of options for us to still make some moves this coming offseason. And lastly, by getting rid of Jeff Teague and Javante Green, the Celtics are going to have a spot for the buyout market. It seems like they have eyes on Otto Porter Jr. That's what the early report from Keith Smith was saying. So we'll have to keep an eye on whether the Celtics pursue any buyout market candidates. OK, so let's get down to the overall rating. I have for the Celtics trade deadline moves. The overall rating I have is a B plus, probably higher than most people. That's okay. I'm going to break down my logic. I don't care if you disagree with me. This is just what I think. I'm not looking at it biased. I'm not always a fan of the things that Brad Stevens and Danny Ainge do, but I don't think that this was a bad trade deadline for the Celtics. It doesn't make the team much better for this season, but it does marginally. I think that Evan Fournier is going to start at some point as as he uh, you know builds chemistry with the, the rest of the starters. It probably won't happen right away because they're not going to have a lot of time. So I think that he'll slowly work into that role as the season goes on. And then the Celtics can move Marcus Smart into the six man spot. I think he's a poor man's Gordon Hayward, probably a broke man's Gordon Hayward, to be completely honest, but he does kind of fill that void a little bit and take the pressure off of Tatum and Brown because they've definitely had a lot of pressure on them this season. I think overall, the moves that the Celtics made are a test of the team that we have constructed currently. We've solidified the wing depth, which is what we really needed to do. And now that Jeff Teague and Daniel Tice are out of the picture, we can really get to see more of what we have in Robert Williams and Peyton Pritchard, which is something that I think Celtics fans have been clamoring for for most of the season. I think Robert Williams minutes have ramped up a little bit over the past month or so. But now, you know, we could really get into the conversation of is Robert Williams going to start moving forward? And I think it's certainly a possibility. I think he should at some point. And overall, it's a low risk move. You're able to bring in another great scorer in Evan Fournier. Like I said, he's been averaging about 19 points a game with Orlando this season. It's definitely going to take a step back from that. I think on the Celtics, he'll probably average around 13 points, but he's going to take the load off of the three, the big three in, in Kemba, Brown and Tatum. And the moves make sense financially. So the team was able to maneuver and get under the luxury tax while keeping 11 million of the Gordon Hayward traded player exception. We create a new traded player exception by moving Daniel Tice for another 5 million traded player exception. And we still have kept intact the Ennis Cantor traded player exception of $5 million. So now we're looking at three traded player exceptions 
one for 11 million, one for 5 million, and another one for 5 million. Unfortunately, we can't combine them. That's the one downside there, but you can definitely use those to, to make a move for some players come this off season. And to be honest, originally, like after the Celtics just made a move for Evan Fournier, I was thinking like B minus uh, for this, this trade deadline, just because of the simple fact that you missed out on players like Aaron Gordon and Vucevic. But after they made some of those financial moves, it makes more sense as to what Danny Ainge was trying to do. Marginally improve the team this season, fill a big need, but still keep that flexibility and avoid going over the luxury tax while doing it. So like I said, overall B+, you marginally improve for this season and you keep your financial flexibility moving forward down in the comment section below. What's the rating that you would give the team? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Why? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyways, though, that's it for this one, guys. Remember, if you're new and you want to find your way back to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.